Welcome to Ear Crush, the Friday podcast for people who love listening to great stories. I'm your host, Stephen Campbell, and I'm running solo again this week. And before we get to anything else, I want to apologize for missing the last couple weeks. We had some travel issues and a hardware failure that that caused some problems, but those problems are behind us and we're back on our regular Friday schedule. But before we get to this week's story, which is the conclusion to Bellatrex, I want to tell you about a new audiobook release that we had this week for LMBPN. The book is Alpha Class Discovery, which is book three in the Alpha Class series. Very popular series. The first two books and audiobooks came out fairly close together, sold really well, and then there was a period of about 18 months between books two and books three, then books three and four came out. This is the audio version of book three. The audio version for book four will be fairly close behind this one. So we're excited about that. These are available at Amazon, iTunes, and of course, Audible. Okay, let's get to this week's story, the final installment of Bellatrex, which was written by Natalie Gray and Michael Anderley and narrated by Emily Beresford. I think you're getting soft in your old age. John flashed a smile at Bethany Ann as the group ran up the hill. He wouldn't have dared say anything like that normally, at least not without expecting a hundred push-ups while Bethany Ann stood on his back in very pointy heels but Yelena looked like she was going to throw up. I got her. Ekaterina slipped an arm around Yelena to help her, and the others went ahead of them for the last little bit. They could hear the screams now, and with every one, Yelena gave a whimper. She stumbled, and John remembered Ekaterina saying that Yelena felt her brother's pain. He couldn't imagine what this was like, but he knew this woman wasn't going to let anything keep her from getting revenge. Let's deal with this dickless, regurgitated piece of mouse shit. And then you and I can see if I'm getting soft, Mr. Grimes, Bethany Ann chuckled. As they came up to the door, she brought up one foot and kicked it forward. The heavy old door, a thick slab of wood banded with iron, practically disintegrated with the force of her kick. She strode into the house, the energy radiating from her, and Yelena noticed two pieces of iron glowed hot when she passed. He's upstairs. I saw in that guy's mind that he was never allowed onto the second floor. It smells like weak werewolf in here, Pete called. He changed a moment later, following Bethany Ann up the stairs with a snarl and a clatter of claws. Elena could feel her brother's pain radiating through her. She steadied herself on Ekaterina's arm and felt Bellatrix at her side. We have to help him, Trix. She used the words to steady herself. We have to... Upstairs, she could hear yelling and snarling. She forced her shaking muscles into a run. Her brother's screams were echoing in her ears, unstoppable. Alec, I won't let him kill you. She came around the corner to find Bethany Ann suspending a man by his neck. His feet kicked, and he yelled contemptuously at her. Who the hell do you think you are? He half screamed, half gurgled. I'm the fucking queen bitch, you cunt-rotting, testicle-winking, fuck-witted bastard. Her eyes were glowing. In the corner, Alec was slumped in a chair. Yelena ran to him, her heart in her throat. She could sense the pulse of life in him, but his skin was covered in bruises and cuts. She worked at the bindings on his hands. Alec, please, please wake up, Alec. Alec, it's me, it's Yelena. Are you still with me? Her voice pleaded. Please wake up. Please, please, please. She was the queen bitch? <laughs> Fuck that. The vampires were gone, dead from fighting amongst themselves. Everyone knew that. The rumors about space, about TQB, they were just rumors. The vampires weren't seeking out new challenges. They were running away because they knew they were weak. Of course, he didn't have a particularly good explanation for why the woman's eyes were glowing, but he sure as hell wasn't going to let her steal his place. He had waited too long for this. Listen, bitch. Her fist sent him sprawling to the floor the very next moment. He could taste blood as he choked on his teeth and bit his tongue. That's queen bitch to you, you ass-faced monkey-fucking-wank addict. The woman stared him down. At her side, a huge wolf bared its teeth. He was hallucinating. That was the only possible reason for this. 
vampires weren't as strong as this one was. She'd brought humans with her, humans they actually seemed to fight with. The humans needed to be shown that Emilion wouldn't just roll over and play dead for them, that he wasn't as sentimental and weak as she was, and they would follow a real leader. And he knew just the way to do that. Elena was crying. Bellatrix sniffed worriedly at Alec. She could feel his pain. She could feel whatever Yelena felt. When her mistress was happy, Bellatrix was happy. When her mistress was sad, nothing was right with the world. Right now, her mistress was terribly afraid. She was whispering to her twin, to the man who smelled so much like her and yet so different. He was nice, Bellatrix thought, even if he couldn't understand Bellatrix the way her mistress did. He was trying to talk now. What did you say? Elena leaned close as he fell, and she caught him. You're safe now. You're safe. Another skier. Alec's lips were bleeding. He clutched at Elena's shirt, leaving a bloody smear. I was wrong guy. They're going to kill him on this slope. Have to save him. All of a sudden, Bellatrix's hackles went up. The enemy, the man with the weak scent like a wolf, was looking at Yelena, and Bellatrix did not like the way he was looking. He snatched at something on the ground. The man screamed, There is only power! His hand raising up. Get out of the way! But Yelena didn't hear. All of her attention was focused on her brother. There was no thought, no hesitation. Bellatrix leapt in front of her mistress as the gun went off with a roar. No! The scream was raw, ripped from her throat. Yelena heard a sizzle of energy and a blaze of heat nearby, and the man with the gun screamed in a way she was sure she would never forget, but she couldn't pay attention to any of it. She was at Bellatrix's side, pressing her hands desperately over the flow of blood. No, no, take me, take me instead. Tricks, tricks! Tears were running down her cheeks. She had come here to save Alec, and while she had Alec, she had gotten Bellatrix killed. Yelena was sobbing, rocking back and forth as Bellatrix wheezed with pain. There had been no doubt in the dog, nothing but the absolute, pure love of one pack mate to another. She didn't deserve that kind of love. You saved me, Yelena whispered. Tears were running down her cheeks. You saved me. And I can't save you. I'm so sorry. You saved me too. The thought held no pain and no fear, only love. I would never let you be hurt. God for damned, Eric! Bethany Ann shouted, and then Eric was there. The man levered his arms beneath Bellatrix's body. Come with me, he told Elena. No, no, just let me be with her. It was a childish plea, but she couldn't bear to let Bellatrix be in more pain. We will save her. He picked Bellatrix up and ran for the door. It's not possible, Yelena whispered, but a Katerina hauled her up. Come on, leave your brother with John and he'll be okay. We have to get to the pod. Go, Alec called weakly. He had blood smeared around his mouth for some reason, but he already looked stronger. I'll be fine. Go. Elena didn't know what a pod was, and she didn't care. She took off after Eric. If there was a chance of saving Bellatrix, she would do anything. Bethany Ann watched the black pods take off, heading into the sky. She'd given Eric very exact instructions, but she had another task and called Pete to join her. The trip through the forest was quick, and they found the underworld lackey without much trouble. He was flailing around in the dark. Perhaps he thought he was quiet, but both she and Pete could easily hear him. When they stepped out from the trees in front of him, the man froze. Hello, Bethany Ann said pleasantly. Her eyes went red, her fangs slid out. Going somewhere? The wolf next to her chuffed in anticipation. The man stumbled back. A million? Not so sadly, not with us any longer. Bethany Ann stalked forward. He's paid for his sins. Are you ready to pay for yours? Please, please, I was only trying to stay alive. 
but he felt her hands on his head, dragging him down as she looked into all of his thoughts. Earlier this evening, I found another one of you assholes. Do you know what I told him? No, he was sobbing with fear. I told him that I would let him go because he had a child to protect, and because he hadn't actually taken part in Emilion's crimes. Oh, no. Marcel, you are judged, and I have found you guilty. The last thing Marcel ever saw was red eyes blazing down at him. He only lived another moment, but it was a moment filled with every agony he had inflicted on the man back at the house. Multiplied. Bethany Ann let the now inert body drop into the snow. What you sow, so shall you reap. Your deeds will come back to you tenfold. Enjoy hell. She looked around herself. It only took a few moments before she sensed a faint pulse of life nearby. As she pushed her way through the underbrush, she let herself fade back to looking human. The skier lay on the ground, half delirious. His eyes focused on Bethany Ann. Are you real? I'm real. She crouched down next to him in the snow. We have to get you to safety. Dangerous. He barely made out the word. And I'm going crazy. Saw a big wolf. A big wolf. So big. Bethany Ann motioned to Pete to stay back. Now, now, I'm sure you didn't see that. I know. The skier's head lolled and he winced as she picked him up. It's crazy, right? I hear people hallucinate all sorts of things, Bethany Ann told him, her voice soothing. But there's no reason to be afraid. No wolves around. Uh-huh. Teo passed out before he thought to ask just how a slender woman was carrying him so easily. On the Galaxic Svea, hidden in a Romania forest. Three days later, Yelena opened her eyes and stared up into a friendly face. Hi, Ekaterina offered her a hand to get up. So, how are you feeling? Good, better than good, Yelena stretched. I feel like I slept for a week. Almost. Ekaterina handed her a shirt and pants. You're all healed now. I wasn't hurt. She felt a bit guilty about that. How is Bellatrix? Out and frolicking in the snow. Absolutely fine. Ekaterina gestured to a heavy winter coat. You two just took a while to wake up, so you got moved in here. And you might not have been injured, but you could say the pod doc cures everything. So old injuries, muscle knots, all of that. You've been upgraded. So has Alec. Somewhere across the room, Alec gave a sleepy mumble. Alec! Elena went over to look down at him and winced when she saw he was naked. Get this man some pants! Ekaterina threw them across the room, laughing. How do you feel? Elena asked him. Her brother's skin was completely clean. No trace of the torture remained there and she could not even see the scar he'd gotten when he was 12 on a sharp rock in the river. Good, Alec sat up. I had some weird dreams, though. And where are we? Some kind of hospital? Yelena and Ekaterina exchanged a look. Sort of, Yelena explained. We'd better take you to see Bethany Ann and then get you set up in a hotel. Virgil Bachu settled back into his chair. His smile was confident. He had heard nothing from his contacts in the countryside. But Teo was still missing. Whatever had happened, it was clear that his rival was not coming back. He thought of Teo's wife, Mariana, and a cold smile touched his lips. It had never been about business for Virgil. The truth was that he could never forgive Teo for winning Mariana's heart. And now that Teo was gone... Virgil was sure it was only a matter of time before he could make Mariana fall in love with him. But first, he would take everything else Teo had valued, starting with his business. He looked down at the contract on the table in front of him. The people selling him the business were late for this meeting, which irked him, but there were no other buyers now that Teo was out of the picture. They would have to sell to Virgil to avoid bankruptcy, 
And Virgil had also readied himself to buy Teo's company for a pittance when word finally broke that the man was dead. Maybe he should take up skiing as well. He laughed softly to himself. The door opened behind him, and Virgil allowed contempt to touch his voice. You're finally here. Good. How interesting. The voice was amused. I didn't think you'd be pleased to see me. Virgil spun in his chair, his jaw gaping open. But you should be dead? Theodore Dimitru smiled coldly. He certainly wasn't dead, and to add insult to injury, he looked, well, taller than Virgil remembered, more muscular, the very picture of health. I'm so glad to see you alive. The words tasted bitter as Virgil forced them out. I don't think you are, Teo said quietly. He reached out to open the door, and two policemen came into the room. And they don't either. They know everything, Virgil. They know you hired people to kill me. Wait, how did you? But Virgil was hauled out of the room before he could say anything else. Teo smiled after him, and then took a moment to look over Virgil's contract as the business owners filed into the room. He smiled up at them. Well now, gentlemen, should we talk about transfer of ownership? I think I can offer you much better terms than my competitor. Thank you so much, Yelena hugged Ekaterina tightly. Thank you all, she added, grinning at all of them. She couldn't stop smiling these days. Sometimes she was so happy she thought she might cry, though she thought of what her no-nonsense grandmother would say to that and kept her tears inside. She couldn't stop the smiles, though. How was your brother? Bethany Ann pointed to the door of the hotel room. The door opened a second later. I thought I heard voices, Alex said, peeking out into the hallway. You should be resting, Elena shooed him back toward the door. I should be dead, Alex said simply. He smiled at his twin and then at the group assembled there. Instead, I just feel a bit tired from the healing. He flexed an arm. I think my muscles may be getting bigger. Yeah, that sounds about right. John nodded. He put his hand to his ear for a moment and leaned in to talk to Bethany Ann. The pods will be here to pick us up in a moment. Bethany Ann nodded, but she was still looking at Yelena. So, do you want to come see the rest of the crew? Where are they? Yelena didn't understand for a moment, and then her eyes got huge. Wait, in space? Why not? Bethany Ann grinned. You're both doing well. I can't leave Bellatrix. You don't have to. Asher lives on the ship with me, Bethany Ann explained. And by the way, about Bellatrix, she's bigger, Yelena interrupted. And that's saying something. And last night, yes, Bethany Ann smiled. She had a feeling that Yelena's nanocytes were doing new things now that she'd been exposed to the pod dock. I had the weirdest dream, Yelena muttered. It was like I was... A wolf, Pete suggested. No, not quite. Yelena shook her head as she tried to remember. I had paws, though. I wasn't human. I was... She broke off, and her eyes got wide. I was Bellatrix, she shrugged. Weird. I don't think that was a dream, Bethany Ann suggested. I would think, based on my time with Asher, that what you are experiencing is real. Yelena's lips pressed together before she replied. I really was seeing something from inside of her head, you mean? Yes, and it's something we could test you for up on the ship. I'm sure the whole team would be interested. Bethany Ann thought about something for a moment before continuing. And I think Asher and Bellatrix are sweet on each other, too, so there's that. They are, aren't they? Yelena grinned. Well, I suppose I could at least go see it. What do you think, Alec? He smiled but shook his head. I think I'll go home and be the responsible twin for once, he chuckled. You go. I'll get home on my own. Can you? Yelena asked. Maybe you'll need to be tended to by the cute receptionist for a few days. He winked. Seriously, I'll be fine. You go. And you promise? No, I won't tell Mom where you went. Thanks, Yelena said in relief and turned to Bethany Ann. Okay, let's go. 
Eric led the way down the corridors and out into the sunshine. There was a scuffling noise in the forest, and all of a sudden, Pete started laughing. What? What is it? Asher emerged from the underbrush, snow coating his fur. Bellatrix followed him, also disheveled. Uh, I don't think they're just sweet on each other, Pete explained. I think you might have some puppies on the way. Yelena sank her face into her hands as everyone started laughing. Bobby B, William called out as he strode across the floor of the hangar bay. That logger came in if you want to come test it. He looked at Bobcat's latest effort to play with a helicopter. Uh, what's that you're working on? Better stabilization for Shelly 3.0. Bobcat held up a tiny piece of equipment with a triumphant grin. About the size of a marble, it emitted a tiny ticking sound as he plunged it into a drone. This little beauty means that even our queen isn't going to be able to make my girl flip. Was that a problem? William frowned as he stared at the drone. He stepped back as the blades whirred into motion and the drone rose into the air. Hell yeah, do you have any idea how much force she can summon when she jumps somewhere? Bobcat mumbled, playing with the controls. William watched the little bladed devil. His friend was hell on wheels in a real helicopter, but there had been Band-Aid accidents in here before. I thought she could just, you know, disappear, he asked, keeping his eyes focused on the little killer. She can. Bobcat maneuvered the drone into the center of the open area. But let's just say, sometimes she likes to make an entrance. And I like my girl not to flip over when she does. Watch. The drone had been loaded with projectiles. As Bobcat pulled a tiny trigger on the controls, the projectiles shot out one by one. The recoil should have sent the drone tumbling, but it barely rocked as it hung in place. William nodded and grinned, and then ducked and turned as one of the rotors came flying off. Hey! Bobcat's eyes lifted. Of course, there are other problems. He shrugged as he landed the drone. He retrieved the rotor and looked at it. That should teach you always to have on your eye protection. Now we need to make new blades, but I've got Jean helping me with that. Some of the stuff she makes the armor out of and... His voice trailed away on a strangled note, his eyes not looking at the blade in his hand. What? William looked behind him to see what had caught Bobcat's eye. Uh, hi. The woman lingering in the doorway, waving her hand back and forth, was tall and slender. Black hair flowed down over her shoulders, and her gray eyes were large. Her face was fine-boned, her mouth small, but smiling tentatively as her eyes took things in around the work area. Am I interrupting anything? I'm just exploring. Uh, you should, um... Bobcat swallowed. William's smirk was tiny, so far. Hi, I'm William, and you are? Yelena. She stuck out a hand as he walked over to her. Bobcat had the sudden, strong urge to beat his friend with a broken drone. Well, it would be broken as soon as he hit William over the head with it. Repeatedly. You really should stick to the civilian portions of the ship, William was explaining. If you came in with the last batch of civilians... Oh, I thought, um, uh, I came up with Bethany Ann and Ekaterina and everyone. She shrugged her shoulders. I'm sorry, we met in Romania and she invited me up. If you've seen a big black German shepherd, that's my dog, Bellatrix. He nodded. I did hear something about that. William rubbed his chin. So you're allowed to be around here? Elena's voice was polite, but pretty positive. Oh yeah, John said I could look around. Bobcat groaned. If he was competing with John, he didn't have a hope in the world. Except that Jean had John, and Bobcat could get John refocused by accidentally, on purpose, saying something to Jean. Hopefully, it wouldn't get John killed before the truth came out. The woman stared at him curiously. I'm sorry, who are you? Well, he ran his hand through his hair, smiling. Bobcat. Bobcat? She pronounced the name carefully. Is that an American name? Nah, it was my call sign and it just stuck. Bobcat wiped his sweaty palms on his shirt before shaking her hand. It was funny. He'd had all sorts of things he was planning to do today. Something really important as far as he could remember. 
but he couldn't think of a single one right now. So you're, uh, you're staying on the ship? Just for now, to look around, and they want to do some tests on me and Bellatrix. She hunched her shoulders. She was smiling at him. Smiling. At him. Dimly, he thought he heard William say something. He looked over at his friend, who for some reason was smirking. Huh? Logger. He pointed back behind him. I said, are you gonna come test that logger? Yeah, be right there. Bobcat could almost taste the cold beer sliding across his tongue. Elena's face fell. I'll get going then. It was nice to meet you, William, Bobcat. She gave Bobcat a smile as she said his nickname. He stood rooted in place. He'd never been so torn. He looked at William in mute appeal and had the distinct impression that the other man was trying not to laugh. Beer. She looked so sad. But beer, he heard himself say. I mean, I could put off tasting the beer, though. Someone should give you a proper tour of the ship, after all. There was a clatter as William dropped the drone rotor. His jaw hung open. He closed his mouth and opened it again several times, but no sound came out. William looked around and muttered, where the hell is Marcus when I need a third party bet review? That would be great, Yelena was smiling again. She bit her lip. I mean, I wouldn't want to mess up your day or anything. No, not at all. Bobcat held out his arm and felt a shiver as she took it, smiling to her. First, let's go see Jean. As they left, William walked quickly to one of the communications panels. He jabbed at the call button furiously. Meredith, please get me Bethany Ann. Now, now. It was a second before her voice came on the line. William, what's wrong? William's voice came out in a rush. Bobcat just fell for a girl. Bethany Ann hummed for a moment before replying, okay. William searched the best way to prove what he was saying. No, I mean, he's showing her around instead of trying new beer. Bethany Ann was silent for a long moment. You know what this means, right? William was practically dancing in front of the communication panel. Okay, yeah, I believe you, William, Bethany Ann agreed. I owe three ounces of gold. Another pause. Damn it, that man should have tried the beer first. She was laughing when she hung up the call. This place is wonderful. Elena looked out the huge window of the bar, her accent making Bobcat feel tingles up and down his spine. The best wonderful, most wonderful? Did I say that right? She asked as she looked back at him. You can say it however you want if you keep talking in that accent. Bobcat grinned at her. Elena blushed. Something about this mechanic made her want to smile so hard her face ached. Her eyes had locked on him the first moment she stepped into the hangar bay. She watched him pilot the drone, explain it to his friend. She'd noticed his hands, calloused, streaked with grease. Honest hands, as her grandmother would say. And he had a way about him, like he took real pride in his work. If it weren't for the fact that he was in space, he was just the sort of guy her parents would be crazy about for her. She could just see him fixing cars with her father, debating skis with Alec, laughing in a pub at night. This wasn't a guy who needed suits or fine wines to enjoy his life. He just wanted to do his work and laugh with his friends over a beer. What is it? He asked her. Elena flushed bright red. She'd been staring at him, she realized. And he'd caught her. She wanted to melt through the floor. She cleared her throat and busied herself with a pretend coughing fit. Um, nothing. I am sorry. I'll get you some water. Bobcat knew the coughing was fake, but he wanted to be able to grin to himself in private. She'd been smiling when she looked at him, like she approved of him. Him, with the dirty mechanic's hands and the casual clothes. How long had it been since he'd even tried dating? All the women he'd seen years back had rolled their eyes at how he doted on his helicopters. This girl, though, she seemed to like hearing him talk about Shelley. She listened, she asked questions. On a sudden hunch, he pulled her a pint and turned around. She had followed him down from the viewing area. I thought you might want a beer instead. 
Her eyes lit up. You have beer in here? He was in love. He was absolutely, positively in love. If he'd had a ring, he would have proposed on the spot. As it was, he had only the beer, and so he handed it to her reverently. Try it. She took a big gulp, wiping the foam from the corners of her mouth with a self-conscious laugh. Then she took another drink, and another. This is amazing. Where did you get it? Actually, Bobcat took a seat. I brewed it myself. Really? She took another drink. This is so good. Could you teach me? To brew beer? He grinned pretty damned wide. Hell yeah. Want to go learn about it in the back now? But we have the whole rest of the ship to see. Her voice trailed off as she looked down at the beer and then over to the door, down at the beer again and slowly to the door once more. Her eyes rested back on the mug. Okay, let's brew some beer. Bobcat nodded. Good choice. Come on, I keep the supplies through here. Bobcat led her away, pausing only to fill two more mugs for them. As soon as they were gone, Bethany Ann, William, and Nathan came out from the other side of the restaurant slash bar. They'd been in the bar and hid when Meredith told them the two were heading in this direction. They stared after Yelena and Bobcat incredulously. He found a woman who likes beer as much as he does, William admitted. He found a woman he likes more than beer, Bethany Ann agreed. If they ever have babies, they are going to be born holding steins. Nathan concluded. Beside them, Bellatrix chuffed with laughter. Finney.